Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Babylon scene and we're going to try and put some logic within said scene. Uh, refactor a little bit of the code and we're going to take a look at how it turned out. Uh, the last thing, there's going to be a little icing on the cake that we'll be, that we'll want to add at some point. However, we're not going to do that in this tutorial. This is just kind of nitty gritty to get the thing functional. Okay, so I am going to show you where we last, uh, left off. Um, we had a lot of unfinished code. Now, however, we have something that's somewhat more functional. Uh, you remember that we created this kind of start game uh, function. Now, within the set start game, what we're going to do now is create a few uh, global variables, which are going to be our pad one, two, three, four, um, the animation uh, emissive, uh, and the animate box. We're also going to have an input equals true, which we'll use later on. Okay, then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to create an object, which is going to be our create scene object. Okay, and within the create scene object, we're going to have our sequence, and that's going to be an array. And this is going to be kind of a global variable that's in a, that's available to everything within um, this object. Then we have a copy of that sequence, because uh, the way that this is going to work, since you can't really win in Simon Says, is that you can only kind of lose, is that what we're going to do is pull a number out of, the, out of nowhere, and then stick that number into an array, um, and then we're going to have to create a copy of the array uh, to uh, return the return to the um, to uh, test against whatever the whatever the user's input is. Okay, uh, we have our turn number, and then we have whether uh, the the state is active or not. Okay, so here's our new game function. This starts off with a new game, essentially. Um, it's available only within the create scene, so you do create scene dot new game or whatever, and that's going to launch off this function. So it says this sequence, it's referring to this sequence, which is within there, this copy, this turn, um, and then this is the jQuery call code that's going to actually set this thing off, um, and then this is active is true. Um, and then what it's going to do is call this next turn uh, function, okay? So what does the next turn function do? Okay, the next turn function is basically going to push a random number into this sequence, and then it's going to um, make a copy um, of the sequence starting at zero and put it in there. Um, I have this log that was just for uh, checking bugs and things like that. Um, and then it's going to call the animator function which is available right down here. We'll just skip down right there. Okay. And what the animator is going to do essentially is it's going to call the animation for whatever no random number is going to be put in there. Okay. And then we also have this, um, the, 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 this time thing that just checks to make sure that a set amount of time has passed. Okay. Otherwise things go too quickly. Okay, so we call that function, and then after that function gets called, we're going to wait for the user input. Okay, so where does the user input occur? User input occurs right down here. Okay, so if pick result uh, is a hit, and then what we're going to do is run through a whole series of scene, begin anim animation, create scene, check the click. So here's the big key right here. This is where we call the function create scene check click and what this is going to do is take pick result, okay, which is right here and go for pick mesh and then it's going to call this function convert click because what we have to do essentially is take that pad number and convert that into a number and then it's going to put that number inside because we're calling another function basically convert click which is right up here scroll up okay so pick result goes in and then basically this is a return to a value from 1 to 4 right here convert click and that gives us that value and then it sticks that value in the check click okay so what does check click do let's zoom up boop, 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 boop. Um, check click there we go alright so we're inputting that that number that's returned, okay? And then we're creating a new variable called correct click, and that is calling the 
um, array function dot shift. Okay, that it essentially says return the first variable um, in the array and whack it off. Essentially, okay. So it's taking a, the copy of the array that we made and returning the first value in said array. Okay, um, and just returning that one value. Okay, and then what we're saying, you know, is if correct click equals value, this is true. So this returns basically a true or false statement. So we say whether this is active, it's a, if it's true or not. So we check that, and then we'll check the lose. Okay, so go in here, and we'll call the check lose function. So this is active is the state. This is either returns true or false. Okay, and that's if basically if the value is equal. Um, then it returns true. If the value is not, it returns false. And then we have the check lose function. Okay. And what this is do, does is checks to make sure that the, it is true. And if it is true, that the, uh, length is equal to zero of the array. Okay. So, um, if that, if that condition's met, then it goes on to the next turn. So basically, if you do false, um, that's your other statement, then it runs over to this dot game over. Okay? So this basically, this whole function basically checks and updates everything. And if it's a game over, then we start a new game right there. So this is pretty straightforward. Um, I expect that you're probably going to have to look through the code to really kind of get a grasp on it, but this is kind of the basic walkthrough on uh, this last little bit of it. Uh, of course, go around, play with this code, but um, and try and see what you do, what you can do with it. Add sound. There's all sorts of things you can do. Polish it up. Uh, let's see it in action, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and start the new game. Let's begin. First one, bang, one. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Three, four, five. All right, well, this is going to get tedious anyway, but I just wanted you guys to see this is what happens when it goes over. It just starts you all over again. Um, of course, there's other ways you can fiddle with this, improve upon it. Uh, this is just a basic concept behind it. So uh, go ahead and make it so that you can deny people allowing interaction within the scene while the scene is active. Um, continue building upon this code. Anyways, thanks again for tuning in. Um, hopefully this really kind of sparks your creativity. I'll post this code online so you guys can access it. Um, and hopefully in the future I'll keep polishing this and make it a little nicer and I'll show you all that, all that work I do with that. I uh, hope you guys enjoy my Babylon tutorials and don't forget to subscribe.